Hello everyone, welcome to another MRCP Paces video. Today we are going to be talking about abdominal examination and in that one thing that puts a lot of people off which is the liver patient okay uh, liver patients have a lot going on with them and we will be going through a lot of these factors today for those of you who don't know me my name is dr vishal kumar i set up the youtube channel keen medic and also keenmedic.com where you can find my course and my book let's get started in this video we will be covering aspects of how to identify a potential liver patient as you go into the abdominal exam station next is once you've identified how to approach the liver patient and lastly the vital signs that you cannot afford to miss we will also be looking at things like investigations and management uh, that you need to be asking for and looking out for okay so let's talk about how to identify the liver patient first so when you know that you are going into the abdominal exam station of course you don't really know exactly what you're going to get right so you may have a scenario which tells you that the patient has got has come in uh, with abdominal pain but that doesn't tell you what the issue is or they may tell you that they have come in following a recent episode of being unwell at hospital and this is their follow-up appointment okay so it may or may not give you enough information when you're examining them uh, before you touch them you need to actually see whether you can get uh, clues that will tell you what system you need to be really looking out for so by the bedside you need to look for things like this a scar okay so whether or not it's a transplant or a resection are the uh, first thing that the scar would suggest you need to look out for a liver transplant scar or a renal transplant scar okay you need to know what these look like if there is no scar then you need to gen then think about okay so it could be one of three possibilities either this patient has got hepatomegaly with or without splenomegaly okay or this patient has got cirrhosis of the liver or this is a renal patient with their own kidneys without a transplant okay because there's no scar with a potential av fistula which may be under their gown that they might be wearing when you're examining them okay so this is what should be going through your head okay so look out for a scar first if there is no scar then yeah uh, it is going to be one of these three things most likely all right once you've identified that this is actually a liver patient these are the features that you should be looking out for which i'm sure a lot of you will be aware of of chronic liver disease all right so in the peripheries things like clubbing deputrin's contracture make sure you actually feel the patient's palm uh, when you are looking for deputrin's contracture not just actually inspect them and make sure you feel palpate the palmar aspect of the hand okay palmar erythema asterixis jaundice spider nevi there should be at least five or more and these are usually distributed in this um, subclavian area so in the upper chest area gynecomastia in males you should be examining them if you think this is a liver patient and you can just palpate under the male uh, nipple okay if it is of course a female don't do that because this is irrelevant okay distended superficial abdominal veins otherwise known as caput medusae the asterisks the here mean that they should not be present in your patient in paces, okay? Because these suggest that the patient has got decompensation, which is the next thing I want to talk about. So there are four features of acute decompensation that you have to be aware of, that you have to mention when you are presenting, that, you know, to show that you have looked for them and that they are not present. Because if they've got acute decompensation, they will be unwell and they won't be in your examination, all right? but you still need to be looking out for them. So first, first and foremost is jaundice, secondly, ascites, thirdly, encephalopathy, and lastly, bleeding. So of course you can um, do some grading with these as well. For jaundice, you can do things like bilirubin, ascites can be determined by scanning, ultrasound or CT, and cephalopathy with things like ammonia levels, and of course GCS, bleeding with their coagulation screen, yeah? 
So earlier we talked about the features that uh, you need to look for in a liver patient, right? Now I want to talk about the possible the possible scenarios you're going to get when you are examining them in the abdomen, okay? So it's either going to be a hepatomegaly or it's a going to be a cirrhosis. The last thing it could be is a transplant, but we'll come to that in a second. So it's let's let's think about these two things first. So if it is one of these two things, then the top causes that you have to um, consider are alcohol, okay? You cannot forget this. And the other thing is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH as it is uh, shortened to, okay? And then there is everything else. So don't jump to all the way down to things like uh, primary biliary cirrhosis or hematochromatosis, things like that, okay? Your examiners won't be very happy if you say that, um, you know, that is the um, top cause of cirrhosis or hepatomegaly in the UK, for example, because it's not. These are the top causes and you should always be talking about them first but if you think that there is a very high chance that your patient has actually got hemochromatosis for example then of course do say that but mention that the most common cause normally is alcohol in terms of the clues that you're looking for unfortunately there aren't too many clues when it comes to liver patients because either uh, they have been treated and the clues are no more or they're not in the acute situation, right? So they will not be in your exam. So, but we can still look out for them, yeah? So these clues are things like tattoos and needle marks, which would suggest viral hepatitis. The other thing is looking out for things like insulin use. So this would be looking for evidence of blood glucose monitoring on their fingertips, or they might have an insulin syringe by their bedside. So this might suggest things like hemochromatosis, which you can, uh, which can cause diabetes in patients, or the effects of immunosuppressants. So there are many immunosuppressants out there, and many of them have got cardiovascular side effects, as well as they can cause uh, hyperglycemia leading to diabetes. Or if they are very cachectic, it may have been a malignancy that caused their liver issues, okay? So these are some of the clues that you need to be looking out for. Now, if it is a transplant, a lot of the transplant things that you need to looking out for actually are evidence of complications of treatment, which are linked in the renal video that I did. So I'm going to be linking that here for you. Do go and check that out if you want to learn more about what you need to look out if it is a transplant. Now let's, let's talk about the investigations and management. So every patient, you need to be starting with history and examination, yeah? So even though you are in an uh, examination station, when you are presenting to your examiners, always say that I would like to take a full history from the patient first and then perform examination of the relevant systems. So this, this may be the cardiovascular system because you might want to check their fluid status, etc. Okay. And then you would proceed to in other investigations. So these would be monitoring the liver function. So this would be the, your standard things like full blood count, urine electrolytes, full liver function test, um, coagulation screen with INR and CRP. Okay. So this is your standard monitoring blood test. However, this doesn't tell you what the cause might be. So in terms of looking for the cause, these are all the things that you might be considering. Autoantibodies, things like antibiotics mitochondrial antibody okay viral screen for hepatitis iron studies things like ferritin and total iron binding capacity for hemochromatosis ceruloplasmin for wilson's disease and alpha 1 antitrypsin for alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency okay so these would help you give the cause as well as imaging which we'll come to in a minute and things like treatment monitoring so if they've had a transplant then they would be on immunosuppressants and immunosuppressants would need monitoring in terms of their levels, okay? So if it's too high or too low, that can obviously have effects. And decompensation of the transplant or of their native liver. And when they have this, you need to be uh, identifying the cause with things like acidic tap, 
or actually just diagnosing them with things like ammonia levels, okay? Imaging can be ultrasound or CT or MRI. So they can have Doppler ultrasound or just standard plain ultrasounds, depending on what you're looking for. And MRI can be um, standard MRI liver or MRCP, okay? Again, depends on what you're looking for. And lastly, always mention that you would involve the hepatology or the transplant team if they have had a transplant, okay? It's no good doing all of this without mentioning this because obviously they are going to need specialist input. You are not the specialist and bear in mind that they are going to be uh, unwell. So you always need to seek the opinion of the specialist. Okay. All right, I hope that makes sense, guys. So let's just go through the summary of what we've talked about today. First of all, identify if it is a liver patient, look for a scar, okay, and then move on to the next step, see if it is a transplant or not, and identify evidence of chronic liver disease or acute decompensation, look out for these features, then move on to look, looking for causes and clues of the liver disease. And then think about immunosuppressants and the side effects, which will be linked in the uh, renal video, as I mentioned earlier on. And then think about investigations and management that would be relevant to the specific patient in front of you, then present to the examiners. All right. I hope this makes sense, guys. So if you want to learn more and develop effective strategies for PACES, then make sure you check out the book that I've now got on Amazon. The link will be in the description below and as well as my course, which will also be linked below. I'll see you in the next video.